The piadic numbers are a completion of Q of the rational numbers with respect to what we call the piadic absolute value. But how do we know that Q is not complete with respect to that absolute value? In other words, how do we know that there are elements in QP for any prime P, there is an element QP that is not in Q? In this video, I'm going to construct several such elements that are in here, but not in Q. For example, the series that is given by the sum of all the powers of P is a series that diverges in the, using the usual Euclidean absolute value, but as a piadic number, is a perfectly valid piadic number, this series converges using the piadic absolute value. It looks like it wouldn't be in Q, but in fact, this is an element of Q because this is a geometric series, so the sum of a geometric series is 1 over 1 minus P which is a rational number. So this is not an example of something in QP that is not in Q, this is in Q. By the way, I made a mistake in my video about real analysis as scam, and I mentioned this as an example of something that is in QP but not in Q, but that's wrong because this is clearly geometric, so the sum is a rational number. So let's see some examples of numbers in QP that are not in Q. For example, let P be an odd prime, this can be done for P equals to two, but let's just say P is an odd prime and Q is any other prime such that Q is congruent to a square modulo P. By Dirichlet's theorem, there are infinitely many such Qs. So I can pick a Q that is congruent to a square, another prime that's congruent to a square modulo P, and then such Q, the square root of Q, will be actually an element of QP. It will be a piadic number, and clearly the square root of Q is not a rational number, we know that those things are irrational, and therefore here we have a source of examples of things that are piadic, but not in Q. For a concrete example, 7 is congruent to 1 modulo 3, which is a square modulo 3, so the square root of 7 is in Q3. What's the expansion of a square root of 7 in Q3? Well, a square root of 7 is congruent to 1 modulo 3, because 1 squared is 1 is congruent to 7 modulo 3, is congruent to 4 modulo 9, because 4 squared is 16, and 16 is congruent to 7 modulo 9, 13 squared is congruent to 7 modulo 27, and so on. So the square root of 7 is 1 plus 3 plus 9, that's the beginning of the piadic expansion, of the triadic expansion in this case, of the number square root of 7 as a triadic number. So in this case, the square root of 7 is clearly not a rational number, the square root of 7 is a triadic number, so that tells me that Q is not complete with respect to the triadic absolute value. However, clearly a square root of 7 is algebraic over Q. So the question now is, can we do this but with transcendental numbers? Can I come up with a number in Q3 that is actually transcendental over Q? And the answer is yes, thanks to a theorem of Mahler from 1933. Uh, and here it is. I don't know how fluent you are in mathematical German, so let me translate. Here's the theorem. Let P be a prime and let Z be a piadic number such that the piadic absolute value of Z is less than a half if P is 2 or less than 1 if P is bigger than 2. Then Z and e to the Z, the exponential of Z, cannot be both algebraic over Q. How are we going to use this? Just take Z to be a rational number. Then, well, with this property, then Z is clearly algebraic, but they cannot be both algebraic, so that means that e to the z has to be a transcendental number. The piadic exponential, by the way, is described by exactly the same power series as uh, the real exponential, except that now you cannot plug in just any value of z, any piadic value of z, you have to be careful about its convergence. So anyway, I can take 2p, and 2p has piadic absolute value a fourth if p is 2, or 1 over p if p is bigger than 2, and it satisfies the condition of Mahler, so and z equals 2p is algebraic over q, clearly, because it's just an integer, therefore Mahler tells me that e to the 2p is transcendental over q, so that's an example of a piadic number that is actually transcendental over q. So as a result, that sequence up there has a limit, which is e to the 2p, that sequence is Cauchy, and the limit is not a rational number because it's transcendental over q, 
and therefore Q is not complete with respect to the p-adic absolute value. So that's one example of a number that is always in QP, but it is not rational.